17 seconds. So the son of an ice cream supervisor wins the Super Bowl, and it'll be vanilla tonight on the house. <laughs> and lots of it. What a performance by this young Dallas Cowboy football team. They go back to big day as Super Bowl champions. Dallas 52, Buffalo 17. The first coach to win the National Collegiate Championship title and the Super Bowl, Jimmy Johnson, age 49. And Mama and Papa down there in Port Arthur, Texas, I'm sure they're standing and saluting right now. No distractions, but a great quarterback and a great young defense. And a team now is this, you got to start talking already, Dynasty Dallas, the 90s. I mean, where can they go except to be one of the best for a long time? The NFC East is going to have to start the drafting, trading, and acquiring talent to beat these guys. Yeah, there were fireworks. And for Buffalo, three times in a row, they're the best in the AFC. Three times in a row, the loser of the Super Bowl. We're standing by in the locker room to get the comments from the players, coaches. O.J. Simpson will be in the loser's locker room and Bob Costas in the winning locker room. And that must be how Buffalo feels right now. Their slogan up in that city of Buffalo is the city of good neighbors. And this uh, difficult defeat will test the depths of uh, that wonderful communal spirit, won't it? We'll have the post-game ceremonies for you after this break for your local stations. In the locker room of the victorious Dallas Cowboys, their sixth Super Bowl appearance, their third victory, their first in the post-Tom Landry, Gilbrandt, Tex Schramm era, the first in the era of coach Jimmy Johnson and owner Jerry Jones. And just off to the right of Commissioner Tagliabue is the Vince Lombardi Trophy. Commish, I'll leave it to you for the presentation. Thank you, Bob. Jerry, Jimmy, you two are the architects, the engineers, a lot of people would say the visionaries who have produced an outstanding season, marking one of the most extraordinary turnarounds in sports league history, capped today by an awesome, awesome display of power, precision, speed, and just about everything else a football team can demonstrate in a game. So congratulations to both of you. Jimmy, put your hands out here with this. Jerry, you signed the checks, so you go first. Well, I will go first. First of all, I want everybody that enjoys sports, want them to know how special this is for these group of people because they did get up off a knee. They weren't on their back. They were just down on a knee. I'm so proud for Cowboy fans. I can't say enough for what Jimmy has done. He's given his heart and soul to us having a winning football team. I want to thank my family as well and Paul, all the work you're doing for the NFL. Jerry, before we talk to Jimmy, teams speak about a five-year plan. You did it in your fourth. There were so many moves and turning points. Would you pinpoint one as the most important point in the history of this franchise under your direction? Yes, it's pretty easy. The very first one when I hired Jimmy Johnson to be the coach. Jimmy, first coach in history to win a collegiate national championship and the Super Bowl. How does it feel? Well, it feels great. Yeah. I think sometimes people might question the way we do things as far as the commitment, but you know, if you could just feel the way these players feel right now, and I wish everybody in the world could feel the same feeling they have right now, then they would understand the commitment because, uh, I mean, it, this has got to be the greatest feeling in, in, in of all, all things, just to be able to go out there and win it all. How do you feel personally? People talk about, sometimes joke about, your intensity and your single-mindedness. How long will you allow yourself to revel in this before you think about next season? Well, this is one victory that I will enjoy here for a couple of weeks before we start going on to next season. But we got to start looking at those colleges and we got to look at those players to, to help us out for next year to get better. Are you this much better than Buffalo? Well, you know, Buffalo had a tough string there. I mean, you know, we felt like we'd get some turnovers, and we did, and... Uh, and I think, you know, obviously, that was the big key. And, and once you start on a downhill slide like what they had, it, it was very difficult for them to turn around because we've got a good football team. 
nine turnovers. The big point in the game, the sequence late in the first quarter, early in the second, Jones takes the fumble in, and then they don't get in from about a foot out with two cracks at it. Well, you, we play outstanding football. You know, we, we play good defense, we play good offense, good special teams, and and we protect the football. And I think that's a big key for our football team is we do protect it. But we just we have a lot of great players uh, that have given their heart and soul to get to this point. Honestly, are you surprised that it happened this quickly? No, I, I really felt like we were going to be here. I just didn't know how long, but I felt like we'd be here. And once we started going, even the second year and I had a chance for the playoffs, and then the third year going the way we did, I said, hey, you know, anything can happen once we get. Listen in, Jimmy. Hey, for all of you players and coaches, <laughs> hey, hey, understand this. As much as you relish being the best, as much as you relish that, as good as it feels, the best thing that you've got and what you'll have the rest of your life is the love that you've got for one another because that's what got you here is being a total team. And that feeling is something you'll never, ever lose. It'll be the greatest feeling in the world. Hey, congratulations. All right, let's talk with some members of the Cowboy offense, beginning with Emmett Smith, who had over 100 yards in all three of the Cowboy playoff victories. Were you surprised by how easy it was for your team today? Yes, uh, fairly, because we didn't know what to expect from them. And uh, we expected a tough ball game, and uh, things just start working out where they start turning the ball over. We start scoring more points, and taking advantage of every opportunity that they gave us, and uh, you saw what the rest was. Did you have any conversation at all before the game, maybe during or as you left the field, with Thurman Thomas, yes, who in effect was your opposite number? Yes, I did. Uh, he, he wished me he wished me well before the game and after the game. We talked. He congratulated me. We, we talked about seeing each other maybe later on tonight, perhaps tomorrow when we leave to go over to Hawaii. Did he make any comment about the game and his own performance? No, he didn't. He didn't make any comment at all. All the things he said to me that was very funny. Payday coming up sometime later on down the line. And uh, he told me to go get as much as I can. Did you note discouragement eventually? We're watching one of your runs here. Discouragement on the part of the Bills. Were they a discouraged team? Well, I think as we start scoring more points and more points, they start getting a little bit down on themselves and so forth. But then they try to pick it up early in the fourth, in the fourth quarter. And uh, we just kept scoring and just took them out of the game, I believe. All right, let's turn to Troy Aikman alongside Michael Irvin. He hit Michael for two touchdowns late in the second quarter. That more or less decided the issue. Eight touchdown passes, according to our figures in the postseason, and not a single interception. You picked the right time to peak. Well, our whole team did, really, and it's, it's been a great stretch for the last three games, obviously. Everybody's played outstanding. Our defense has played outstanding. But it, it's a great feeling. We've been dreaming about this for a long time. You seemed tremendously composed in your first Super Bowl relatively early in your NFL career. Made a lot of right decisions out there. Well, early on, I think the whole team, including myself, was a little bit uptight, and, I, and we just weren't clicking. We weren't doing the right things. And, and then we got some things going for us. We, we settled down a little bit, and then it turned into a game much like any other game that we've played. On this one, uh, we finally got it the right coverage, and, and Michael did a great job getting across the guy's face, and, and we got the touchdown out of it. You took what they gave you, as the cliche goes. Early, it was Novacek, five big catches early in a TD. Did that help to open it up for Michael because he was your target toward halftime? Well, he, he really was, and they were taking away our outside receivers early in the ball game. They forced us to come underneath the J and then work the backs, and, and then once we got things going, they started trying to put some pressure on me. That opened up Michael up, and, the, and, and he and Alvin were able to do a great job of getting open. What did you do to neutralize Bruce Smith? Well, you know, our offensive line has played outstanding all year long, and, and, and we had a lot of uh, uh, respect for this defensive football team, and we came in, we kept backs in at times to try to help out when we could, and, and, and the offensive line really did an outstanding job. I, I got hit early a few times, and then after that, they, they picked it up, and they did great. Troy, congratulations. Thanks, Bob. All right, let's turn to Michael Irvin. A moment ago, he was holding the Vince Lombardi trophy precariously over my head. I turned to him, I said, look, don't drop this thing. He said, I don't drop anything, and today you certainly didn't. No, it was it, it was a great effort by the whole team. Uh, you know, like Troy said early on, they was going double teaming outside receivers, and we figured, hey, well, we'll hit some passes inside to Jay, throw a few passes to um, Daryl and Emmett, and then they'll come off for some players one on one outside. They were here for their third time. Lots of veteran players. You guys have the youngest team in the NFL, but it appeared approaching the game that you were supremely confident. Yeah, but I, like I said all week long, I think um, everybody really underestimated the job. 
that our coaching staff does preparing us for big games. You know, they put us in every situation physically on the field, and if we can't, if we don't have time doing it on the field, they put us in every situation mentally in the classroom. They do a great job preparing us for big games. We're going to talk to Ken Norton in just a minute after a break, but last question for you. I don't mean to put you in a position to be less than gracious, but people wonder about this. Nine turnovers, the game got away from Buffalo, but how much better are the Cowboys than the Bills? Or maybe the way to put it is, how do the Bills compare to the best teams that you had to get by in the NFC to get here? Well, they, they got a great team. There's no doubt they have a great team. And we do play great competition all year long. And that, that prepared us for this game. But the thing is, they, it's not like they're just going out and turning over the ball. Our whole job, and I, they, they stress that all week, com commit turnovers. Let's go out and force turnovers. We don't only tackle the player. We tackle the ball. They do a great job of that on defense. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, Michael Irvin, and we come back with Ken Norton and others after this break. Team members of the Dallas defense, coordinator Dave Wanstead, as of tomorrow, head coach of the Bears, Thomas Everett, over from Pittsburgh, two big picks today. Did you just get the news, Ken? Ken Norton just finding out that he'll be without Dave Wanstead come tomorrow. Heartbreaking, isn't it? It is very heartbreaking. He's done a great job for this defense, and uh, we take our hats off to our coach, and uh, it's very important to us all. For this defense that everybody's been talking about all year, about uh, no name and all that, they got to know us now. We're the new, the new world champions around here. No member of your defense made the Pro Bowl, but collectively, you were the NFL's best. Let's talk about the game that you had. Your hit knocked Kelly out. You had the fumble return late for a touchdown, and I think the most important play you turned in, this one. When you stung Kenneth Davis on third down near the goal line, look at Kelly. He's already signaling touchdown because it looked like Kenneth had a good head of steam up. You stuffed him, and then Thomas intercepted in the end zone on fourth down. A definite so goal line, something we've been working on. We've been very strong on it all year. You have to take our hats off to our whole, uh, whole defensive line, our whole uh, linebackers and everything for the coaches calling the plays. And I think that uh, you got to take our hats to our defense. We did a great job once again, and it's a great feeling for us. And there's your touchdown just to cap it for you on Super Sunday. <laughs> Definitely. I've been trying to score for five years now, and the fact that I was able to come home and uh, play on my, my home turf, the fact it's uh, very, very fitting for me. It's a uh, great feeling for me as well as our defense. I just want everybody to know that uh, our defense is, uh, is somebody now. We, uh, they got to know who we are.